Hi, everybody. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Capco Report Show. Bob, I am going to be talking with a very interesting company today that is going to take care of a lot of the shortage of RV spaces. This is going to be a great interview. Sound, sounds interesting and sounds like it's very much needed. I've got uh, an interview with Jordan Foose, who is a VP of the RV Women's Alliance. And we're going to talk about their recent reveal and an opportunity for somebody to win a completely restored crosswind Zinger travel trailer. Wow, win a trailer. That's that's trailer. pretty amazing this time of, in, in this time in our history with right. travel trailers and inventories being so restricted, it sounds like a good deal. So we've got those stories and much, much more coming up right now on The Camper Report Show. Hey everybody and welcome back to the news segment of the Travel Report Show and much of the news as Bob Zagami has said before, comes from the pages of RV Business and we're always happy to work with our partners over at RV Business. That, that we are and uh, a little bit lean on the news this week given that it was a, a July 4th holiday weekend and it's just kind of we're finishing still working. up. In, you and I are still as, working. As we tape this so uh, yeah, the, the forecasts were accurate. I can tell you from watching the roads around here in Maine is unbelievable traffic, a lot of RVs, a yep. lot. Yeah, well, you know, you you previewed what, what we wanted to talk about because there was a, a AAA report that said 47 million people will be traveling this 4th of July weekend between July 1 and July 5. And the interesting thing is I was at Normandy Farms today, one of America's most famous and um, well-respected campground, and there were not many spaces to be found. And um, you know what I noticed, Bob, it's not just couples, it's families and extended families, because you could see two or three campsites all being used as one. Um, and I think you're going to see more and more of that as, as the summer grows. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting weekend because, you know, most of the country had really foul weather on Memorial Day kicking off the uh, vacation season. And we wound up coming into July 4th with torrential rains up and down the uh, Northeast coast. And people did not cancel. I was around to several campgrounds here in Maine this weekend. They didn't cancel. And the other thing is they didn't go home early. They, no, they, no. You know, they, they, no. they had fires in the rain. They had you know games under the awning, but uh, they didn't go home early. Well, so that, you know, in 47 million people, I believe it. Traffic was heavy. <laughs> Uh, RVs were all over the place. And to your point, in many of the campgrounds, it wasn't just the camping family. They, they, they were doing celebrations. They were doing family right. reunions. They, right. they had a lot of, lot of visitors. So put a lot of stress on the campgrounds who are already shot on help. But uh, everybody pulled through and it, it was an amazing weekend. Yep. And, you know, I saw a lot of um, not restored coaches, but some vintage coaches at this particular campground. And ironically, one of them was a country coach. And I said to my wife, as we were driving through, I said, those are built like rocks. And uh, then we came across this story that said, country coach, a very, very um, uh, loyal group of owners. And some of the units are at least 10 years old. Probably the newest ones are 10 years old. Well, they've been out there since the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, they did succumb to the recession in 2008, 2009. But yes, they had the reputation of a quality built coach that, that lasted for years. There's no question about it. And Bob Lee, who founded the company, I had a very great relationship with him uh, during the years that I covered his company for, for the media. And he was one of those owners and founders that was very accessible to the media. He, he was one of them that could explain every coach. He was kind of like a Bob Tiffin. You know, you know, the, in, in the same mold, in, in the sense that when I saw him at the show, he was very proud to show me his latest units. And he knew every one of them. He knew the name. He knew the structure. He knew what engine was in it. And and they, they actually got a group. It's called, let me see if I get the right name here, Country Coach Friends International that's going to have, they do hold rallies, but it's 200 steadfast country coach uh, owners and uh, friends of them that are going to have a rally in uh, Junction, uh, Junction City, Oregon, which, by the way, is where 
country coach emanated from. And they had a large campus at one point in time. They had 1,600 employees and over a half million square feet of manufacturing space up in Junction City. It was the premier, one of the premier brands. And they also, unlike a lot of RV manufacturers, one of the other things that they did besides building the conventional motorhomes, they actually had a division that did Prevo bus conversions. It was called Royal Coach. Right. So they, they had traditional motorhomes, but they also did bus conversions. So they, they knew what they were doing. And they did it very well. Yep. And it's nice to see um, a large number of people. I think they said they, they hold three or four rallies a year um, regionally. And you see the product still. And when you look at like this one today, uh, they may have done a new paint job on it because it looked brand new. And, um, you know, always again, nice to see well, that. You know, one of the other things that as the com country went into recession and then his, uh, Ron Lee, his brother, brought it back as a service center and repair shop. But back in 2015, Winnebago bought the intellectual properties to Country Coach, the name and everything. And then they moved their diesel production out to Junction City, but eventually brought it back to uh, Forest City. Yeah. But they still own the intellectual property. So it, it, there's probably a very good chance at some point in time, we will we'll see the country coach brand back out there again, but uh, much like Grand Design or uh, uh, Chris Craft Boast, it'll be owned by Winnebago. Yeah. Be interested exactly to see right. what happens. Exactly yeah. right. Interesting. You know, another interesting phenomenon that's taken place. Um, we have talked with several of these people in our conversations here on the Camper Report Show remote workers, people that hit the road because not because they wanted to, but because their companies were shutting down. And finally, some people, and, and the number is growing more and more each day, remote workers that they don't want to go back. They don't want that nine to five. They, they don't want to commute into a big city. Um, but the interesting thing is the companies find that these are some of the best workers because Instead of getting in at nine in the morning and being harried from a commute, they were on the computer at 6.30 or seven o'clock and working a 12 hour day instead of an eight hour day. Well, and you're right. It's not just that they don't want to go back. They're not going to go back. They, they've changed their lifestyle. Uh, the the work-life balance is more important to people right now. They've proven that they can work anywhere and be mobile. Uh, all they need is good internet and a hotspot. Yep. And they can do it anywhere that they want to do it. And it's going to change, dramatically change the corporate structure of, of how people work and also where they work. So it's going to be very interesting to watch. And it's, it, it starts with people doing their own van conversions. They can buy Class B, Class C motorhomes. They can do restorations of vintage trailers. It, it, it runs across a wide spectrum. It's not just the hippies out in the back 40. This is, this is real world mainstream and it could be anything from taking a brand new, you know, van, a Dodge or a Ford or a Mercedes Metro's van and doing it all yourself. Or it could be buying a prefabricated and full production uh, camper van, which are flying off the shelf. And, and I get notices every almost every week, well, I'll say every month of a manufacturer who may not have been in that market segment before. They're jumping into it now. Entering it, and people who have been in it before are expanding their product line. So there are a lot of products. Yeah, the other interesting thing, a few years ago when I went out to Winnebago to the Grand National Rally, you know, there's a certain demographic of the people that had the big class A's. And, and then when you got to the Travato section, it was like half the age. It was people in their 30s instead of you know, 50s and 60s and 70s. Yep. And I know those are flying off the shelves. And another thing that I read recently is the market for used mail trucks and used FedEx trucks, the vans, um, is out of sight because yep. so many people that can't buy these units because they're not available through the normal process uh, are, are DIY people. They're doing it themselves. And that's a whole, that's a whole little cottage industry right now. That and uh, schoolies, uh, people who yep. buy uh, yeah. old old school buses. I mean, some of these people are telling stories that they buy them, you know, for a thousand dollars, and then you know, clean out the inside, strip it down. You still have the chassis and the, the wheels, and change some of the windows, and you got yourself a motorhome. Yep. And those, with those diesel engines in the in the uh, in the chassis, they were they were built to last. That's right. Yeah, they were built anyway. for millions of miles. Yeah. yeah. 
And the other interesting story that just appeared is that our parent company, RV Life, just purchased the, I got to use the term right, the intellectual property to the RV master classes. Talk about that only because it's important because more and more people are entering this RV industry um, as consumers and there is a learning curve. And what RV Masterclass did was to uh, get people from zero to, um, you know, intermediate and advanced. Well, the two interesting things about this story. Number one, it's a further expansion of the RV Life Network that is all things to all people are being, whether it be forums, whether it be owner clubs, whether it be reports like our show here on the Camper Report Show. Uh, They've just expanded now into the educational aspect. And congratulations to the six people who only formed the RV Masterclass in June of 2020, just as the pandemic was hitting. Mm-hmm. Now, they, they uh, full-time RVers, they, they're YouTubers, they're influencers, and, and it wasn't their primary job, but they wanted to have their next generation of owners, people in their age brackets, have some education. And it was... Uh, created by Kyle and Olivia Brady from Drive and Environment, Ray and Jason Miller, Getaway Couple, and Tom and Kate Morton from Morton's On The Move. Those six people started it, and now they're, they're very comfortable having it in the hands of Andy Rubinowitz and his fantastic staff at the RV Life Network. And they, they come out in the first pass, they have 15 courses uh, from other well-known educators, in addition to the original courses, which RV Life now hopes to expand upon and create new ones. So it's going to become a major educational outlet. Uh, Andy doesn't do anything unless he does it big and uh, does it well. So they're, they're going to align themselves very nicely with a large segment of the uh, industry itself and a large segment of consumers for an additional quality education site. Quality. And you know what? You need to know the right stuff before you buy an RV. And even after you buy it, you got to figure out how to use it properly, how to go to campgrounds, how to figure out what campgrounds are best for you and the alternatives to campgrounds. Because again, we've talked many times in this show about the tightness of availability for the 2020 season. So this will um, fill that gap. So there we go, everybody. That's a wrap on the news, Bob. I got all the news right now. Last week I missed a sorry, but we've we've got it all in, <laughs> right? So that is the story for news. Stay with us. We've got two great stories coming up right here. Where, Bob? At the Camper Report Show. Mike here from RV Blogger. Don't waste hundreds of dollars on an external GPS for your RV. All you need to do is download the RV Life app right onto your phone. This app is so cool, it has RV GPS built right into it. So you can load all the specific measurements and weights for your RV. It'll give you directions safe for your RV to follow. And by the way, if you have RV Trip Wizard, directions for your trips upload into this GPS automatically. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Camper Report Show. And my guest today is Jordan Foose. And Jordan, you are a very busy woman with RVWA, but tell us about your role in the RV industry. Certainly. So um, I am one of the founding members of the RV Women's Alliance, also known as RVWA. I am on the board as the vice president, and I also am the sponsorship committee chair. Um, My day job, I work for Hebner Integrated Marketing, uh, which is a marketing agency based out of Colorado, but we've been specializing in working with clients in the RV industry um, for almost 33 years now. So That's, that's a long time. I didn't, I didn't realize they had been that active in the industry for so long. Um, RBA, RBWA has gotten a lot of headlines lately for some of the great work that you've done. You know, it was, it's been out there now a couple of years and you gradually increase and build up your membership, but also the projects that you have. And you, you undertook an amazing project last year. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Drab to Fab? Yeah, so um, we, uh, the president, Susan Carpenter, Um, And our team here at RVWA uh, had the idea during the pandemic, um, simply because we are really tied in being an industry association. And um, since all the industry shows were canceled, uh, we had to pivot and come up with something new. So we came up with the idea of Drab to Fab. Um, We took a 2007 Crossroads Zinger 29 foot travel trailer. 
and we made it the ultimate work from the road RV. So we started this project eight months ago and it's gonna uh, go on for two more months. Uh, we just revealed it to the public for the very first time on June 23rd. So everyone got to see the RV in its entirety. Uh, we had over 85 women throughout the industry volunteer their time, effort, and energy into making this thing a beautiful, beautiful travel trailer. And um, something I'm really proud about, you know, being the sponsorship committee chair is we have over 41 sponsors uh, came out and donated product and ideas for this thing. And it is beautiful. Uh, you can check out the trailer on our website, uh, drab2fab.org. And uh, there's actually the interesting part is once we did the big reveal event, we had over 200 people gather together um, and uh, in Elkhart um, on the 23rd. And that night we opened it up for a sweepstakes. So uh, no purchase necessary. You can go on to our website that I just mentioned. They're at the top of the page. You get to see all the pictures of the trailer, the interior shots. Um, and now we're in sweepstakes mode. So uh, you can buy entries. You don't have to buy entries. You can like and share and get yourself some entries. Uh, but we are going to officially close out the sweepstakes portion on August 23rd. And the winner will be chosen on August 26th. Uh, there's actually, so not only the top tier prize package is obviously winning the RV, but yeah. we have a, a second and third pl place uh, prize packages just because of all the amazing product we received from our sponsors. Well, the, the workmanship and, and I, I read someplace that they felt that that floor plan doesn't exist in the RV industry. That you, you actually created something for the remote workers, which we know is a large percentage of people that are on the road today since the pandemic hit. So you've got a one of a, it truly is a one of a kind trailer, number one. And the fact that all the women had put this thing together, I thought it was fantastic the way that the sponsors came and supported the project. Uh, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but this one, it seemed like everybody in the industry was behind it. And that's, yeah, that's it was a, a good thing. It was a home, it was a home run, you know, from uh, the designers, the volunteers, the sponsors, um, and now into the sweepstakes. And uh, I just so desperately want somebody who really wants to win this thing to win it and uh, really enjoy it. And like you said, um, we, we took the front uh, bunkhouse and we turned it into an office. I mean, this thing has the most upgraded products you can possibly imagine on it. It's, it's, it's a wonderful trailer. And um, the only people who can't win it are uh, myself and Susan and the rest of the RVWA board. <laughs> so anybody else is eligible. That, that's fantastic. But you're right. They, they will have the talk at the campground. Whoever, whoever wins this thing is going to be popular wherever they go camping. And you, you, actually, you actually gave it its own name too, right? It is a crossroad singer, but you get, what's the genesis of the name? Yeah, so we named it the Chrysalis, um, which is um, a state of where a butterfly is before they become a butterfly. And uh, it's really a transformative um, type of phrase. And so um, it's branded that way on the front of the RV. Um, uh, Lisa and her team at Sharpline Graphics were just fantastic. We, we got really cool graphics on the exterior um, portions of the RV. And actually we incorporated all of the sponsors logos. They're kind of hidden uh, in the graphics, really tastefully done. But uh, everybody really enjoyed kind of going up and trying to see, oh, who sponsored this thing and where's my company logo? So it was great. I didn't, I didn't see, I learned so much from you, Jordan. I had no idea that that had been done. That's a great idea. Name some of the bigger sponsors. I mean, you, you had a lot of sponsors. You obviously can't name them in a short period of time, but who are the real sure. big contributors that uh, really got it off the ground? So Eric Sell um, was the first big supplier that believed in us and fully supported us on this project. Um, they were what we deemed as a gold sponsor and um, they donated multiple products. Actually some of the second and third place uh, tier levels actually have some of their products in there too. Um, so yeah, a huge thank you to the Eric Sell team. Right. Great our silver, I'm sorry. Great company. Great company, great yeah. people. Yeah. Um, our silver sponsor is Patrick Industries. And what can I say about Patrick? I mean, they stepped up 
we, you know, a lot of the women who built this RV, we work in the industry, but we've never done something like this before. We didn't know the hurdles and, you know, oh, we're, we're going to need extra cabinet materials or more hardware here. And Patrick Industries just went above and beyond, was like, whatever you need. Um, and I also have to give a shout out to um, the East to West uh, Division of Forest River, the ladies over there. The, the amount of time they volunteered and product and weekends uh, was super fantastic. Uh, we went through 350 candy bars on the build. Uh, just, we, uh, just 350? 350 candy bars for all these women. And we went through 12 cases of water and uh, we're proud to say zero COVID cases and we kept it all very safe. Um, I also have to give acknowledgement to the RV Technical Institute as they were the ones who donated the space for us to store the RV and work on it and have everybody safe um, throughout the pandemic. So and you had you had some Lippert components in it. So the Lippert, so actually uh, the Lippert team uh, scheduled their own weeks of volunteering. Uh, there was actually several weeks throughout the pandemic that they they came and um, you know did the windows and just a lot of really great product from the Lippert team and. Like there are 41 sponsors and I do wish I could thank everybody individually right here, but uh, it would take your whole show, Bob. Right. Well, you know, uh, because it is a consumer show, a lot of the Correct. people may not know the names of Eric Sell and Patrick and Lippert, but they are the three largest component suppliers. They, they provide most of the things that actually go into trailers and motorhomes and they stepped up because it's another great place for them to showcase their products. Well, and I think what was so interesting about this is like, technically they're competitors, right? But they all played right. so nicely in the sandbox together. And we got, I mean, they they just filled in holes where the other one couldn't or, you know, what it just, they really all worked together. And I'm so proud of the work that has been done to the trailer. Um, and I just truly hope that somebody, like I said, wins it that really will enjoy it. And right. um yeah. You got something else because again, we are consumer oriented and RBWA is a trade is an association for people in the trade. But you've just launched something else that consumers, some some consumers out there who say, you know, that's a fun industry and I love to go camping and I love my motorhome. I wish I could work in the RV industry. You've got something for them also, right? We do. So um, we're really proud to announce that. Uh, we've been listening ever since uh, we started RVWA two years ago. Uh, people have demanded that there be a industry jobs board, uh, a place where people could come apply for positions, whether that be at the dealership, the manufacturing, the supplier level, uh, campgrounds, everywhere in between. And we have created a jobs board specific to the RV industry, and it is called the RV Career Highway. And uh, we're we're starting um, all of the marketing and promotions that go around that. We've been um, working with our partners who have sponsored us for the year. This is one of the big initiatives they are here to support. And if you've been under a rock and haven't been paying attention, the RV industry is on fire and there are a lot of jobs to be had. So like you mentioned, Bob, you know, RV Women's Alliance, we are for uh, people in the trade, in the industry but this might be one avenue to help get you here and to start working with us. And um, we're not only just for women, um, as you know, you've been one of our, what we like to call supporters from the very beginning. And um, so it's for men and women and that jobs board is for anybody. It's open for anybody. And you can even, um, if there's not a job that you see that you want on there, you can actually post your resume up and get a bunch of people to call you. So. Well, the beauty too is- If you wanna work, yeah, it's, I'm sorry. Not, it's not just Elkhart where 85% of these RVs are made, but you know we have manufacturers in Alabama with Tiffin. We got Winnebago out in Forest City. There are a lot of other places, but it also covers you know like my my local dealers here in New England. They they need help. They need technicians. Uh, the career path you mentioned, RVTI. What a wonderful career path for women who are adept at mechanical things. They can become certified technicians in the RV industry and go to work tomorrow, probably at any dealer in the country. It's so active out there. Yep. Um, well, pre-pandemic, you know, the RV industry represented 2.2% of GDP. I'm interested to see how that skyrocketed. And a lot of people don't realize 
you know, this is a viable industry. There are great jobs. You can have, like you mentioned, you know, the service pieces or at the dealership level, um, you can get a job in marketing. You can get a job in purchasing and sales. Um, there's a lot of opportunity. Yeah, whatever your skills are. Jordan, thank you very much. We've been speaking to Jordan Foose, VP of RVWA, the RV Women's Alliance. Check that out. And we're going to post up for the raffle. Hopefully you can buy some tickets and maybe you'll have that baby in your driveway real soon and check out the career highway. Jordan, thank you very much. Any closing words for our fans? Uh, no, nope. please just buy a sweepstakes ticket and uh, reach out to us if you have any questions. And thank you so much, Bob, for the opportunity. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye now. I'm Jesse from Outsiders Calling, and I love adventurous family travel with my wife, Jenny, and our son, Tucker. For over three years, we've RV'd across the U.S. and Mexico, and it's tough to find places that meet all our needs. Now, we plan our trips with the RV Trip Wizard, pull it up in the RV Life app, select it, and go. It helps us discover amazing new places to grow together as a family. RV Trip Wizard with the RV Life app is an awesome trip planning combination. You can get both for one low annual price. Check out rvlife.com to learn more. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Camper Report Show. My name is John DePietro and it is always a pleasure to introduce you to new people in the RVing industry. And you'd have to be under a rock somewhere in New Jersey for the past year and a half if you haven't seen the explosion in RV sales, which certainly has resulted in the explosion of people that are camping. In fact, estimates are that 56 million families will be RVing this year, which is about a 50% increase of last year. The problem is, where are they going to RV to? Because campgrounds have not grown in the same, uh, what do you call it? Um, Hasn't grown at the same rate. Yeah, the same portion and rate. And um, you know what? We've got somebody who has stepped in and we want to bring him in, bring them in right now to the Camper Report show. I am talking to Coulter DeVry and Hank. They are the uh, founders of Moochdocker. Moochdocker. So we've heard Boondocker, we've heard Moocher, we've heard a little bit of everything. But first of all, Coulter, welcome to the uh, Camper Report Show. Tell us a little bit about the history of this company, how it got started, but more importantly, why it got started. So, John, I appreciate you having us on. And it, it started, Moochdocker started, I'm, I grew up farming and ranching, and i uh, Times get pretty tough in farming and ranching. I think everyone's heard that old song before. But uh, when I was a kid, times were so tough that when we moved up from a trailer house to a double wide, the rest of the ranchers called us uppity. Uppity. And I've just, <laughs> I've just seen uh, farmers and ranchers struggle for years and years relying on commodities. And that's my background is, is land and farming and ranching. And I thought there's, there's gotta be other ways. I lived, I grew up Northeast of Yellowstone National Park. And uh, we had a lot of traffic, a lot of RVers in the summer. It's, it's a short season, but it, there were a lot growing up. And I thought, you know, I, I think farms and ranches have more to offer than, than public lands and, and commercial campgrounds. Mm -hmm. Why aren't we hosting RVers? So that was always a thought of mine, but then I had a marketing partner who was an avid RVer and she started telling me about the problems of no vacancy and having to boondock in that we all see RVs parked at Walmart. And as a kid, you actually, you see them there and you think, man, times must be tough for that person. Yeah. But then um, you realize it's a 45 foot bus. <laughs> and uh, I, I guess you kind of realize that, you know, maybe there's a match here between the extra space that we have as farmers and ranchers and the demand for these people to find a place to stay, if, especially if they don't need a campground for the night, if they don't need the facilities, if they don't need the pool, if they don't need the, um, 
uh, you know, the horseshoe, uh, what do you call it? The pits and, and stuff like that. Is, is that kind of it, what you were thinking? Well, it's, it's more of a, I got looking into the size of the industry, as you mentioned, and the industry has just been growing like crazy since yep. the 2008 recession. And, and I did my due diligence. I, I have a business degree and I saw, wow, this is a huge problem. Those people parked in Walmart aren't there because they choose to, it's because they have to. There's no vacancy at commercial campgrounds during peak season and public campgrounds first come first serve. That doesn't work for a lot of people and public campgrounds um, you get what you pay for and they're free. Mm. So, so people are boondocking, not because they necessarily want to, but because they have to. And we thought we got to solve this problem. We need to bring supply to the market and as you mentioned, supply of RV sites, campground sites, <clears throat> which we feel is best answered by peer-to-peer -peer networks. Um, your, your big corporations, uh, your publicly traded REITs are not going to be bringing that supply. The RV demand is just growing too rapidly. And it costs about $35,000 per site when you include access Mm -hmm. uh, legal, red tape, uh, concrete, gravel, water, electricity, you're in it for about $35,000 a site. And that's why uh, RV campground sites are not keeping up with the pace of demand. And now we have millennials like me who, are, who have families. We have some disposable income. We're buying RVs. We're traveling. We're bigger than your generation, John. And we're about to inherit all your generation's money. You guys did really good, you baby boomers. And this RVing industry is only going to keep booming. And the problem is not the problem of boondocking is not getting answered by the commercial sites and the public campgrounds. So a peer-to-peer -peer network has to come into play. Okay. So Coulter, you're assuming we're not of the same generation. I and mean, we won't get into that because it's only a short show. However, so mooch dockers is basically for, I mean. In, in your publicity material, it said a two-sided marketplace. So people that have land that want to welcome people um, for a fee, you know, because again, we have other, other sites like this, such as, well, not really the same, but you've got Harvest Host, which is an alternative to a, um, to a campground, and you've got Boondockers Welcome, which is fine, but that is a free site. So I think what you're thinking is that there may be some people that have land that that need to gen, you know, not necessarily need to generate revenue, but like in the case of the ranches and the farmlands, it's revenue that, you know, sometimes they need it to make things make things happen. Is that correct? Right. I, I think the best carrot you can dangle in front of someone is a buck. I think uh, the best incentivization uh, incentives for market equilibrium is money. Hmm. And so if we're going to bring more sites to the market for our viewers, we have to incentivize hosts. We have to give them reasons to, and it's not just a uh, bottom of the barrel. Here's, here's a concrete pad next to my shop. It's, we, we believe competition improves value. So, so over time, the RVer is going to get a better experience, a better site, at a lower cost, that's American. competition. and Competition, that's, that's the American way. That's right. Um, so effectively, how, um, how you doing? Uh, well, wait, before we, before we go into that. So if someone is an RVer that doesn't necessarily want to do the commercial campground route, how do they find space through Mooch Docker? Well, uh, we, we like to think that we are the first option for last resorts. And hey, no, that is a good one. You could, if you went to New York City, an advertising agency would charge you 50,000 50, to $100,000 for that. First option <laughs> for last resort. Okay. So go yeah, ahead. And, I'm on the road and um, it's getting to be four o'clock in the afternoon. And um, we've called a couple of campgrounds and they're not available. What do we do now? So you check our, our site, moochdocker.com. Um, we have hosts across the nation. Hopefully, hopefully a host will be within one hour proximity of where you're at or you're hoping to be at. And you simply, it's, it's all 
your your traditional peer-to-peer -peer online booking platform. We're not revolutionary in that sense. Um, this is proven technology. We didn't have to reinvent the wheel. We just had to provide a marketplace where people, uh, RVers could easily book a site on demand when they need it. Okay, so I book it now. And uh, do I deal directly with the, with the site owner? Do I work it through you? How does that work? You do. So the site owner is going to approve your request. And the reason, the reason um, we're involved is we provide assurance. We provide accountability. Uh, we, take, we charge a small fee to the hosts, which we're waiving through 2021 because we're trying to get ahead of this boom, John. Yeah. And so we're trying to encourage people, supply us your sites. So we're going to waive all fees to host through 2021. Um, but we're there to help both sides. Both the RVer and the host have a good experience. We're kind of a mediator. We provide the insurance, the liability. We provide the accountability and the transparency. It's not just John Q. Public who's staying at your place. We have their name, credit card information, and uh, what better way to hold someone accountable than having their credit card information? Okay. So say that I have property and um, you know what? I, I want to generate some extra revenue. What do I do there? So again, getting on moochdocker.com, we have um, how to host. We have a, a guideline of kind of what we're looking for. Will it work for you? This doesn't work for everyone. Um, so checking out other sites that are across the nation, what other people are doing. Uh, moochdocker.com is a good place to go to see if this works for you and, and your lifestyle, your needs as a landowner. Do you, do you only want to host on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday? That's okay. Block off your calendar and only host on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Do you only want to host in July because you're going to be traveling in August? Block it off. Okay. Um, we we the make this or the or the landowner sets sets the price. Landowner sets the price, okay. and eventually, John, we're going to have an algorithm that um, suggests a price based on demand. So, like, think of Sturgis, South Dakota, during yep. the Sturgis rally. Yep. We don't want to price gouge people, but we do want to encourage more supply. And if we can tell a host look, we think you'll get 125 bucks a night. We, we need to present that to them to give them the consideration. Yeah, exactly. So we are just out of time right now. We want to thank you so much for taking time. Do you have your chairman of the board there with you still? He's taking a nap. He's taking a nap. Okay. Oh, that's why with the chairman, you can take a nap whenever you want. We <laughs> want to thank you so much. Moochdockers.com. M-O-O-C-H-D-O-C-K-E-R. Right? Not is it plural or singular? Singular. Singular. Moochdocker.com. And uh, I know you're just getting going and um, your numbers have grown. We always like talking with new people with an entre entrepreneurial mindset because we can look back on this interview from a few years from now, look back on it and say, hey, we were just getting going and we didn't have this, we didn't have that. And um, we want to wish you the best for uh, and thank you for getting into the fray, if you will, and solving that issue of we've got record-breaking RV sales. Where are these people going to park? Because the last thing you want to do is to uh, have an RV with nowhere to go. Thanks, John. It's, I've enjoyed it. This has been okay, great. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>